first games I had on the PlayStation 2, uh, Metal Gear. What was, what was the one that came out? On the PS2? Yeah. And Metal Gear 2? Yeah, it was Metal Gear 2. Which was like the best looking game ever when that came out. That was just pushed, it just pushed the PS2 to, it seemed to its limits. Well, missing the uh, the best game that came out. Go on. Grand Theft Auto. Yeah, G- GTA 3. Unbelievable. This one, that was, I think that's still the most amazed I've ever been by a game. Going from, obviously, you know, PS1. Yeah. To, to what they made it into on PS2. Yeah. Just, you know, that first sort of, first scene, you just, it, you know, just thrown out into the street after a botched, you know, a botched <laughs> robbery. Yeah. Like, trying to get away from, like, trying to, you're just broken out of, obviously, just broken out of a prison van, you're just in the street, and then that's it. Go and do what you want. Do some missions yeah. if you want. Or not, go and steal some cars, drive around, you should got to explore this city, and it was just Definitely the most, in my opinion, the most influential game ever. Most influential game ever created. Yeah. I, that that game inspired, like, every game that you play now, it was inspired by GTA 3. And, it, and, it's, and it's funny, because we were talking about the, the original um, GTA, and and how, when when you went from the, the, the systems before the PS1, you had a lot of these games and these franchises that were... Um, Converting from 2D, the 2D games that we were used to, to 3D games. And a lot of them just didn't work yeah. as much. Like, um, you know, just certain games just didn't work well in the 3D world. They just looked better 2D. And I remember first hearing about, I read it in a magazine that they were making the next GTA a 3D game. And I was like, oh, it's going to be shit. That is going to be shit. Cause there's so many games that went from being a 2D game to a 3D game and they just did, they just seemed shit. And I just wrote it off. I just wrote it off. Didn't want to know about it. And then I remember being, like, I didn't even read reviews around it about it or anything. And um, being in a shop, and I was going in to buy a f- couple of PS2 games. And uh, I think it was with my mate. And he said to me, oh, he said, oh yeah, my mate's got GTA 3. It's really good. I said, really? Oh, I'll give it a try then. <laughs> the rest is history. I mean, it was just this mind-blowing. Was, this took up my, pretty much a whole year year 10 and year 11 at school. People just talking about playing yeah. this, this fucking game. Yeah, you just that's, you, in class, you just talk GTA 3. <laughs> oh, I found this, I, I did this, I did that, like. I mean, I had my chatterbox like memorized. Yeah, I'd see every caller, what every caller said. Yeah, oh, it, you know, it was, the, it, was it just did, did so many firsts. Like you said, it was the first that I can remember this 3D world, which was just fully explorable. I mean, if you look back at it now, it seems very small, very like empty. But it was oh, no, at the time. Not, it's not for what for what it oh, was. Oh yeah, for, for what, what it was at the time. To... It was just you could just like 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 the first games. You could just do what you wanted. Like um, I'm just going to explore. I mean, I completed the game. But I spent most of the game just going on rampages or just driving around, exploring. It wasn't even that that got me with Grand Theft Auto 3. It was it was sort of like, it was like an actual world. It got night time, it got daytime. It yeah. It started raining. The clock and, the, yeah, the weather. Yeah, and it was just, it, it felt like an actual, an event you were playing, you know, you could... Yeah, you just you know, got immersed. You you felt like you feel like you were part of that world and everything was yeah, going about, the daily go. business, the pedestrians and... You could just be be one of them if you want, or go and get on a massive police chase. You yeah, know? it's just you could, you could do anything. Yeah, it's just so good and graphically then, as well. When it, like, yeah, you see the graphics, you're like, shit, this is like a whole a whole city, and I'm sort of like exploring it now. And then they improved upon it with Vice City. <laughs> Definitely. Oh yeah. Um, oh, it yeah, was the, the, the Vice City doesn't need, you don't everyone knows what classic yeah. Vice City was. I mean, that, that's probably the one that. I think you ask my, most fans of GTA, and that you ask what their favourite GTA game ever, and I think most will say Vice City. I think I think early adopters of the PS. Yeah, yeah, the yeah, PS yeah, yeah, yeah. The people that, that played all the series through is what I'm talking about. Must be people from the eighties, really. Yeah, people who were, were growing yeah. up in the eighties. People like oh, I was born in eighty seven. I was a bit like mm. you know I don't really remember anything of the eighties mm. as it was in its in its. No, but it's just a fascinating. But, time, especially I mean, but, Miami, but people you know. who were growing up in the eighties, they were, you know, they were saying like just everything, like the music they listened to, yeah. like the 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 cars on it, the fashion, on yeah. it, the everything about it was just it just summed it up perfectly, and they yeah. done such a good job of it. But that's just credit to them, really, to go to be able to go from, you know, what they did with free mm. to do like a. It would have been so easy for them to do another modern day game, bigger city, and that, but they yeah, they just pushed it, it, pushed the envelope. I mean, with the the soundtrack, still the best soundtrack ever, in my opinion. Incredible soundtrack! Oh yeah, it was the first game again to show what it's one of they like, could it's do with music. Soundtrack, yeah. People heart back to and that the all story, the time. like you know, obviously very like inspired by like Scarface and Carlito's way and stuff like that. It was just, it was oh, it was just, so, and obviously having Ray Liotta, Ray Liotta voice the main character, it was just 
wall. Like, you know, they, they were getting... It was showing that they could do what films could do, you know, getting proper cast big members. Names. In. Yeah, big names. And then... I mean, what year did that come out? I mean, it was... Like, well, Vice City, um... God, uh, you've got to be talking about 2002, 2003, maybe? Yeah, because I think uh, GTA 3 came out in 2001, because I know it came out just before 9-11. Because I know they acted. Because obviously GTA Three is Liberty City, which is based in New York. Um, and after uh, what happened in 9/11, they had to kind of detract a bit from it. So they, I remember they changed all the color of the cop cars to from light blue to dark blue because right. uh, New York police cars have like light blue on it. But so they had to make it seem remove itself a bit more from looking like New York. So that yeah, that was 2001. But yeah, and I'm pretty sure Vice City came out a year after. 2002 so yeah and then obviously you got San Andreas which is towards the end of the PS2's life cycle but that was just um, my favourite my favourite PS2 game yeah the, m- the most ambitious game ever for its time you know um, it was so huge compared to Free and Vice City wasn't it I mean it's just, yeah it was, it was it was like the free the, um, it was free cities you yeah free well they both cities. had one city this had three and a surrounding land mass of countryside and um, that pushed sandbox game into what it could be. You it, do what you want, you know. It was literally anything. It was even more so than any GTA now. I think you know you literally could do what you wanted. Like your character, your char- like the fact that your character could gain weight, or you could customize it, or you you could. You, there was just so much to do. It was just almost overwhelming at the time. I just when I remember first buying that game, I just didn't know what to do. I just like I didn't know where to go, or what to do. Just... We, we were talking about that, weren't we? It, yeah. it seemed like San Andreas sort of. They just sort of had all these ideas before they went on to the like the PS3, because like, it was obviously coming to the end of the PS2 when it yeah. was released. So they just chucked everything in. Yeah, you got everything. I just I just loved it, like the the story of it, the sort of the way it had more than one like facet to the story. They yeah. just obviously had the like ten penny, you know. Yeah, yeah. Samuel Jackson, <laughs> you know, just like pulling you one direction. You had other people from around you met around the city, sort of. You know, pulling you in other directions, and it just made for an epic story, and just it, it it made GTA what it is today. I mean, Vice City did, but San Andreas like improved upon it in the whole sandbox way. You know, um, no, it's just incredible, incredible game. Yeah, and I think I agree with you. I think Vice City and San Andreas were like the top of the pile for me of what was a, an amazing library for the PS2. But um, rolling off a couple of other PS2 names, you got um, other, another game from Rockstar, Canis Canem Edit. Other no, other people know it as Bully. Which is a brilliant game. Um, you but... don't want to speak Latin, but go on. <laughs> doggy doggy, if you want to know. Um, Burnout Free, which was a great game. Yeah, like, um, it was the, by Criteria, and it was the first racing game that truly showed, that, like you say, that showed what fun could be had with a racing game. You know, um, I mean, the idea of like just racking up your score for yeah causing carnage was, was so much fun. It was brilliant, brilliant. Yeah, like the crash mode and stuff like that. Yeah. Um, uh, Pro, Evolu- Pro Evolution Soccer. Now, see the the FIFA fanboy over here is gonna huff all he wants, but I was a fee I was a FIFA man on the PS1 days. But I remember playing the f- a first like few ones on the PS2, thinking these are shit. Like this is going downhill. Like it just, it, they weren't good. No, they weren't. Okay, what you say? The first ones that came out on the PS2 were shite. And I used to buy a lot of gaming magazines, and everyone used to rave about. Pro, uh, Pro Evo, like um, it, first it was ISS Interna- International Superstar Soccer, and then they done like Pro Evo, and then Pro Evo Two, um, and I used to hear people raving about these, and like in the games, make they all hold tournaments and say how amazingly like football it is, and the games that came out from it. So, and it was hard, and you had to master it. So I remember when Pro Evo Three came out, uh, I bought it, and I thought this is ridiculously hard. Like I just couldn't, I couldn't even score a goal. I could not score a goal, and I was getting goals scored against me because coming off of FIFA. Where literally at that time, you literally just had to run from one end of the pitch and then press square or circle, whatever was shooting, and you'd score. Yeah, and it looked no, fantastic. I mean... um, was Pro Evo? It was really scrappy and stuff like that. And the ball, right. the ball seemed to like where in FIFA the ball you would like glue to your feet. This no, would actually. Individual. I always said that about about Pro Evo. It's more. It, the ball bounced around like a real ball. It was like it was real, real physics. It was, it was like, whoa. Real. And like, you'd have crazy games going on. But once like, I learned, you had to really master it. Like, really yeah, in the early it. days. I mean, Pro Evo was very much for the football purist. It was. Yeah. You had to think about it. Not many it. people played it at the start. No. And I think that's what hindered it at the start. FIFA was always there. Yeah. Right from the middle. I mean, F- FIFA had the looks. It had all the licenses to every club. Well, I think that. that's why it made Pro Evo it. had none that's, of that. That's why... That's yeah. why... Um, 
But that's how they good it was. It. That's how good it was because even though the game didn't have the real football names, even all the player names were like made up names, they didn't have the real kits. Sure. The game played so good. But me and my cousin, we used to just play it over and over and over. We'd go, one more game, one more game, one more game. We'd have like, and every single game would be this just epic game like of comebacks and goals. And the thing was, it was so hard to score a good goal in Pro Evo that you really had to master it. And then when you did pull a goal off that looked stunning, you were just like, you just saved that replay. That, and you, yeah, yeah that, you really appreciated it. And that's what started my love for Pro Evo. And then you had Pro Evo 4, which was great, and 5, which was brilliant. Five. After that, it started to go downhill. But, um, yeah, Pro Evo 3, 4, and 5 were, were great games. Who did and, 5 have on the front of it? Um, John Terry and Thierry Henry. Because they were the first... Um, it, the, uh, yeah, the first you only had, like, licenses, a couple of licensed yeah. teams. And you had Arsenal and Chelsea, which was, like, great in that in that game. But, um, uh, but yeah, Pro Evo 3 didn't have any licensed games. I don't know what they were in 4. But, yeah. But, you know, I love them games. Um, Jack and Daxter... Jack and Daxter on the on the on, on the PS2 was like my real true introduction to like real 3D like um, platforming games, and I absolutely love it. So I've never played Mario 64. That was my Mario 64. Jack 2, even better because it was influenced by GTA. You had this explorable city. I love the Jack games. Honestly, I really really did love them. Um, Ratchet and Clank, the Ratchet and Clank series, Ratchet and Clank one, two, three. Again, platforming. You know. Very similar to Jack, but with more gadgets and stuff. Love the Ratchet and Clank games. Um, yeah, Gran Turismo 3, 4, which was huge. Gran Turismo 3 was my first proper Gran Turismo game for me. That's the first one I bought and just poured hours into, after yeah. hours after. You know, it was uh, for the time, it was stunning. Uh, Final Fantasy 12, which was great, that towards the end of the PS2's life cycle. Eco, Shadow of the Colossus, which is, you know, these are games that you've got to play and you've got to experience, and the games you've got to catch on YouTube. And God of War 1 and 2, you know, particularly God of War 2, which is probably the best looking game on the PS2. That really, that was at the very end of its life and pushed it so far. I think that came out when, you know, after the PS3 had come out, but, uh, yeah. So that's the PS2. Um, Moving on from that, um, Game Boy Advance, brilliant system. Did you ever own a Game Boy Advance? Nope. You never owned any Game Boy though, did you? No, I, I was sort of. Oh, so I, the, I, I, that passed me by. Yeah, handheld sort of. See, so, like I said, I've got every iteration of the Game Boy. Uh, yeah, the first one, like, the first handheld was really more the PSP. I had. Yeah. Well, but, yeah, the, when the Game Boy Advance came out, that was during the PS2 days, and um, when that came out, it was it looked pretty damn good, like. Jumping on from where like the Game Boy was, it pushed it pretty far, like graphically, um, and had some great games on it, like a really good library of games. Um, you had like um, Super Mario Advance, Sonic Advance. So there was loads of them kind of games. Castlevania, like it was um, Game Boy Advance that introduced me to the Castlevania games. Um, Advance Wars, which was like a, you would you would really like that. It was a top down strategy game, turn based. And right. I remember, we used to play in like we <laughs> um, in school. We used to have the uh, the, the the console would be under the desks and when the teacher went looking like we'd be passing the game back and forth because you'd like what you do you you do your moves and then pass it and on. then pass it back and then they do and it was such a good game um cool. uh what else oh they, they, they had a tony hawks pro skater on the on the game Boy advance you had like mario kart it was just a really really good um really good system and and then they brought out the game boy micro which was basically advanced but like a tiny little version which we've got somewhere up here I don't know where it is, but um, yeah. But yeah, moving on from that. Um, so during the PS2 days, uh, we had two other. You had the three systems were the PS2, the Xbox, and the Nintendo GameCube. Um, the Xbox, when that came out, I remember it being. When it came out, it, it looked so superior, like graphically, to the PS2. Uh, and it looked like a proper... Do you remember? It was such a beast of a machine. Fucking huge. I remember, it, I remember once I had time off work so I dropped that on my foot. Yeah. Literally from... <laughs> yeah, it was like, like a breeze block. Out. Yeah, and it just... Like, I couldn't, couldn't walk properly. It was, it was it was an absolute hulk of a machine. It just... It was so heavy. But it, it, what I love about the, the original Xbox, it was like... It was the complete opposite to what the Xbox 360 was. Whereas like... The Xbox to me, like we we had the PS2, which the PS2 just dominated um, the games like uh, market at that point, and was like from everyone from the hardcore to the, the casual gamers, everyone kind of had a PS2. 
Whereas when the Xbox came out, it was like Microsoft's like Microsoft back then were quite of a you know they're quite of a geek. They're, they're, it wouldn't be like unfair to say they were a geeky company. You know, they're a PC office based kind yeah, of. Yeah, you only you know really had Microsoft stuff when you were doing spreadsheets. Exactly, or and a letter at work. And when they were making a games console, it, and it really pushed it to seem like this looks like a proper hardcore gamers kind of machine. You know, like this was like they they this not this isn't for the casual gamer. This is for someone that's really interested with gaming. I mean, it was the first obviously console to be able to connect up out of the box online. You know, and and play online and stuff like that. It was really good graphically. Had a built-in hard drive, which, you know, the PS2 was still using memory cards. Um, And I remember being really interested about it, but it was Halo. When I first saw... Because Halo was a launch game. And I I was reading all these reviews, and everyone just going crazy over Halo and thinking, this game looks amazing. And um, uh, I remember my mate bought an Xbox. Well, he got an Xbox for Christmas or whatever like that. And I said... Oh, have you got Halo? And it's like, no, it's, yeah, I can't remember what games he had. It's like, you've got to get this game, Halo, because I've been reading about it and apparently it's incredible. He ended up getting it and we ended up playing the whole game through like on split screen co-op. And I was just like, I was blown away by this game. I thought, I've got to get an Xbox just to play this game. Yeah. Uh, which I did it later on. I got an Xbox like later on in its life cycle. Um, but I used to always, when I used to go around his house, like, cause I had a PS2, he had an Xbox. So I used to play the Xbox around his. But, um, one of the best games on it was not Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic, which was not only the best Star Wars game ever, but one of the best RPGs ever made. Um, and you could only get that on at that time on Xbox. I think you could get it on the PC back then, I'm not sure. But that's what I wanted the Xbox for, just for Halo, Halo 2, which was great, and Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic. Um, the GameCube, I, again, I got later on in its life cycle. Never had a GameCube. No. Um, but I got that, again, Like I got that when it was kind of cheaper towards the end of its life cycle, but I Purely got that for Zelda Wind Waker, um, Metroid Prime, which is a brilliant game, uh, and Mario Kart Double Dash. I used to play quite a lot on that, but I never, I only had a few games on the GameCube, basically just to play those kind of exclusive games that I couldn't get yeah, on the PlayStation. Um, yeah. So what else we got? I think you'd probably want to. What's the what's the next console handheld console that you got? You said PSP, didn't you? I had a PSP. Yeah. Didn't really play that much. The only time we, the only time I really played the PSP was when we played it. We used to play at work. Oh my god, that was that. That, 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 that was it. That was. It wasn't just PS2. The first things that we started playing, I think, was PSP. Yeah, together. Yeah. GTA. Yeah, Liberty City Stories. Definitely. Yeah, we used to. We, there used to be three of us. We used no four of us. Yeah, we used to all have a. We had a PSP with, uh, yeah, Liberty City Stories on it. We used oh, to go man. and sit down in the canteen. We used to like. Because that was. I mean, not only was the PSP like I think mine. It was. It was, it was just. It was so good graphically like because obviously the only thing before that was like the Game Boy Advance which was so far it looked good at the time when it came out the Game Boy Advance but so far removed from what was going on with home consoles on the PS2 but then you had this PSP come out which was borderline between PS1 and PS2 graphics yeah it was just so like how how the hell is this in like I'm, I'm holding this in my hand but with the Game Boy Advance with, when you wanted to play multiplayer you had to use a link you actually plug a link in between the two consoles which sounds crazy now but that's the only way you could play multiplayer but when the PSP come out, you could play local multiplayer for up to how many players? Like, like, like what, four to eight players, maybe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Wireless. Was, yeah. Like, and quite a far range. And when you did that for the first time, it was like, holy shit. And we used to sit in the office, didn't we? Or even down in the, ca- uh, the canteen, yeah, canteen bit of yeah, work. we used to lock out the, like, playing one of the booths in the corner and just, yeah, and just playing shouting, free nice. player multi- um, multiplayer on, G- on Liberty City. You know, that, that it was crazy. And uh, Vice City Stories, which was great. Um, it had some it had some good games. The PSP. Um, uh, what, what, have we, what have we got written down here? Wipeout Pure again. Wipeout Games. Wipeout Pure. I got on launch of it, and it was just um, such a good looking game. That was the game that I, you know, you'd show someone to show what the PSP can do, like looks yeah. wise, the speed and. and well, as you know, it. I think that was what that was why I got Wipeout was, because of Pure. Yeah, yeah. That, that was the this the PSP was quite so I got soonest after I met you. Yeah, yeah. F- on your advice. Yeah. And there begins to be bad there begins the lots of the uh, the influence of me trying to sell shit to people for whatever reason. Yep. As if I'm getting some kind of uh, cut he, from it. He's working on commission. I should if I worked on commission, I'd be wouldn't be sitting here. Um, oh. Chinatown Wars. That's a GTA play uh, game that you didn't play, no, but um, top down like the original GTA, but really ultra stylish, brilliant game. You need to play that. Okay. And Loco Roco that. is another great game on the PSP. Again, you got to play that. Um. Uh. Yeah. What else? Oh, yeah. PC. Around the around the time of 
uh, the PS2 was my first proper P- PC that I bought. My first gaming PC that I actually spent a lot of money on, had cut custom built, and it was purely just to play Half Life Two. You know, I I played the original Half Life on the PC and stuff like that. And this is at a time when I used to. This is probably around the time when I first started going online a lot and going onto game sites like GameSpot and that kind of stuff and reading previews of upcoming games and stuff. And I just remember for like a years, or it seemed like years, seeing screenshots released of Half Life Two. And it just looked like nothing that had been made before. I mean, I think it was the most expensive game that's ever made at that point. And um, I wouldn't be surprised if that was true. Yeah, and I remember thinking, I've got, I've got to play this. I can't play this on my PC. You just wouldn't run it. So I had to get a new gaming PC. And um, I got a new gaming PC, and I got uh, Half Life Two when it launched. And you probably don't remember this, but there, back in those days, there was no such thing as Steam. And um, the only reason Steam became a thing was because before Half-Life 2 came out, it got leaked. And there was pirate versions going around. So what happened is they released Steam, which was nothing but this platform that you had to install, and you had to be connected to the internet to install Half-Life 2, which everyone kicked up a fuss and said, this is ridiculous. You know, yep. Steam is like a pile of shit. Um, Steam in pile of shit. Yeah, and the only reason to do that was that because back then, when you bought a PC game, you just had the CD key. You put the CD key in, that's it, you play but this was like you kind of had to verify online to show that it wasn't like a pirated game, you know? Like, you know, you put your disc in and then it links it online to your account kind of thing, yep. which is just normal now for like yeah, PC so- gaming. But this was the first thing to do it. And then, would you go? Would you know, like Steam goes on to be the biggest gaming platform of all time. Like, it's um, through that it started adding games that you could buy digitally. And then, well, everyone knows what like Steam's like nowadays. It's just, it's just, it's a... It's a behemoth, like in the industry. It's rid- it, yeah, like, yeah. and it all started with Half Life too. But um, Doom Three was another, like, you know, some. I didn't get a lot of PC games like Counter Strike. I used to play a lot of Counter Strike Source, which obviously came with like Half Life Two, and I was still playing a lot of it online by that point. Final Fantasy Eleven, I dipped in for a bit, like the MMO, but it was World of Warcraft that completely destroyed my life. Basically, like a lot of people, it did about ten million people. Um, yeah. World of Warcraft was like, you know, I'd already played Old More Old More Nine, you know, uh, Final Fantasy Eleven, played these MMO games, but World of Warcraft was the first one to kind of hit the mainstream. Like it just it it managed to made it so it it made it so ac- accessible for the casual gamer that um it, it it became huge, and I invested so much time in it. I had my cousin played it, my friend played it, I had loads of friends that played it actually, and that is that consumed the most of my PC gaming time, you know. During all these consoles and that, I played a lot of World of Warcraft. Yeah, you had an ill-fated uh, attempt at trying to get me to play this, didn't you? I did, yeah, you did play for a little while. Well, I say a little while, you probably played for a few days. I tried yeah. to get you on it, it just wasn't your just, bag. No, it's not my, not my thing. Yeah, but that's, know, that's cool. I know you were mental about it. <laughs> oh, I loved it. I loved Remember it. the day you went back to it and found out that you'd been... Uh, oh, scammed, yeah. Mercilessly. Yeah. Completely scammed, but, you know, we'll go into that another day. <laughs> Um, yeah, so then we come up to, now we come up to the point, I guess, of where we first, like, met each other, and then the new systems were coming out, the new generation. You had the Xbox 360 and the PS3 coming out. Now, I remember that we, obviously both being fans of the PlayStation, PS1, PS2, we both pre-ordered the PS3, and I remember it like it was yesterday, that we both booked a day off work for the PS3 release date. Yeah, we did. Um, but then the PS3 got delayed in yep. Europe and it got pushed back another like six months or something so by that point when the PS3 came out I think it was well I think well you decided that you wasn't going to get it at that point I couldn't even afford it because it was so expensive at that point and I thought whatever um, and we both ended up getting a 360 yeah, or I could did. be wrong I think we got, might have got the 360 no we got the free. I bought the 360 before the PS3 came out Um because it was at that point, it was a lot cheaper and stuff like that. Even though I think you made a point that I got completely bent over the counter at game for the amount of money I spent on it, really. I could say that for a lot of things I've seen you buy a game. <laughs> okay. So we bought the 360. Yeah, yeah, you did. You did get bent over. Yeah, I did get bent over. But the 360 dry. <sighs> yeah. 360 <laughs> has a special place in my heart because it was the first console even though i've been playing like i say been playing uh online gaming on the pc oh no, the, this was different level yeah the, Xbox, the, the xbox 360 was the first console that i was playing online with 
and it was so user friendly and it was like it was crazy to be playing on your actual tv and with a headset on and be playing friends online and and it was the first that we'd ever played online on anything um playing stuff i remember playing pro evo 6 which wasn't a great pro evo no. game but it was the first football game it was just crazy like, I'm, I'm actually playing it's randomly selecting random people around the world it's like and, i can play play a game with tell but i haven't got to have him in my house and that was that was a big thing Loved it. Anyway, um, yeah, oh, but... Sorry, <laughs> Tell. That's right. And, of course, the um, it had to, some great sports games on the Xbox 360. Um, the greatest sports game, probably one of the best sports games of all time, is Rockstar Table Tennis. Yeah. And, oh, which is a... <laughs> it's a game, you know, you everyone, will, ag- everyone will agree is the best table tennis game that was ever made. Out of the plethora of table tennis games that there are Probably the only table tennis game that was made by that point. It's a good game. It's a really good game. I don't care what you say. Everyone loves a bit of table tennis and that was the best uh, simulation of it. Moving on. Moving on. I, did, like, I didn't have a huge um, library of Xbox 360 games, I, but standout I, games... I, I put in a lot of hours on the 360. Your 360... I, I, Definitely of the of the last generation, the 360 was your platform. Yeah, that was without a doubt. Well, as it was probably most people's platform. Yeah, I mean, I put in a lot of hours on the 360, like I said, but I was a boring, boring 360 gamer. There's yeah, you didn't FIFA, have like a huge range of genres. Of COD. So reel off what, some of your highlights on the 360. I don't know. I don't think it was necessarily a highlight of games. It was just how easy it was to jump online with people, like you know, doing like four player zombies game on COD with yeah. like three other mates was just amazing so it's more like short bursts of like online games yeah it was just the fact you could just jump on there and there was no like fucking around it was just you're in a game get going yeah like, well, it was pretty much one click to get someone in a party with you yeah you just you know right? you just jump on there you're right mate how's it going yeah, yeah. Right, let's, let's do this Gears so, of yeah. War was the first one for me like yeah, where it was I just I, like I played Gears War. I wasn't massively into it. My brother was. My brother yeah. was playing it all the fucking time. I mean, I wasn't great at it, but it was the first game where no, I was I think like... that was the reason I didn't play it as much because I was used to say it. <laughs> yeah. The third person shooter style. It was incredible though. For, you know, like you say, for jumping into games with friends and stuff and it was just amazingly like a good looking game. Um, Halo 3, obviously, we, we both... We did, did you have Halo 3? Me and you went to get the Halo 3... Yeah, we no, pre-ordered it, we, we, we? We pre-ordered it and went to get it at midnight. But it's despite limited edition. having never, ever played a Halo game, I bought the Halo 3 tin for like 60 I didn't quid. know you hadn't played a Halo game before. Yeah, like, he, he, we was just at work and he was like, I'm going to get Halo tonight, do you want to come down? I was like, oh, for fuck's sake, really? <laughs> that was the first... Oh, yeah, I remember that. Yeah, the first of many midnight launches we went to. Yeah, but that was the yeah. first one I really went to with you. And yeah. for some reason, I just ended up spunking 70 quid like, on a game that I didn't... Play at the start, like, it sat there for quite a while, and then as soon as I played, Once it, I was played like, holy it. shit, this yeah. is fucking awesome! Yeah, like just the story of it, just it was sort of like it's legend preceded it really because it was everyone was already talking about Halo. It yeah, like, it's just brilliant character, brilliant, still holds up. Ga- today. Yeah, it's um, a good game. Elder Scrolls Oblivion um, was like one of the first games that I got on my 360. I think that was the first game that I bought after launch. Which was again that was one of the games that pushed what I think what the 360 could do. I think it pushed it too much for what the 360 could do because it broke my my 360. It broke two of them, and this is the reason why. Even though I have a good place in my heart for the uh, Xbox 360, it leaves a bit of a bad taste in my mouth because I didn't have much good luck with their hardware, as a lot of people didn't with the early 360. You know, yeah, I only actually have to send one to send one back. Ah, luckily well, enough. see, I went through three well this is this is my story i bought the xbox 360 like as you know in game that lasted for a week or two yeah by the time i got oblivion i played oblivion and that killed it um i took the xbox 360 back um game gave me a new one that one died in a week um then i went and took the next one back um which lasted me for a few years and then that one died and then it was at that point where I didn't even re- get a new one because I'd already had a PS3 by that point. But um, So I didn't have a huge library of Xbox 360 games because other than... Um, uh, what was the other thing? Uh, yeah, that was, pretty, that was pretty much it. Oh, Bioshock. The Bioshock came out on the 360. As you know, I'm a big Bioshock fan. Yep. And, you are a um, Bioshock fan. Probably Bioshock... I would probably go as far to say as like it was my favourite game 
or up there as my favourite game of the last generation. You know, like it's literally up right near the top, you know. Um, and that all came from the 360 and playing the demo of it on, on downloading a demo of it from from Xbox Live, which was probably one of my most played demos ever. <laughs> um, but yeah, the PS3, I did buy, I'd say a month or two after launch. And the PS3 went on to become my main system of that generation, you know, mainly because, like we said before, you know, having a PS1, PS2, the franchises, a lot of the franchises... You know stood. Yeah, yeah, exactly. You know a lot of the franchises carried over from that, from that, you know, I'd, I'd already gained like a history of those games. And, you know, I mean, I, there's just, I couldn't reel off what, you know... A lot of the games that I bought, obviously the multi-platform games, you know, they came out on the 360 and they come out on the PS3. I bought the PS3 version, you know, because that just was my system. But, you know, there, there's just too many, too many games to, to reel off for the PS3 because I just bought so many. But, um, you know, just naming a few, GTA 4, GTA 5, Gran Turismo 5, Warhawk, which was my first um, true online PS3 experience. I played Warhawk to death. Uh, Wiper HD, you know, which was... We already know your love for it, uh, Wipeout. In my opinion, Wipeout HD is still my favourite racing game of all time. It's that good. It's just, I wish they would somehow port that to the PS4. Um, the Uncharted trilogy, which is probably one of the best franchises of all time, you know, started on the PS, PS3. Um, the Last of Us, which came towards the end of its life, you know, like, um, everyone, you know, everyone that's played The Last of Us or the remastered version now knows how good it is. Starting that um, on the PS4. Oh yeah, you've got it. Haven't you? Yeah, yeah. Um, Dead Space One and Two, which were you Dead know, Dead Space was awesome. Dead Space was amazing. It it, that was it brought sweet. It, it was like because at that point, Resident Evil kind of died after Five. It was shit. Um, that scared to... me as much as Resident Evil did. Oh when yeah, I was yeah. Like it was twenty horrifying. It was like the first one, just that eerie sense of being on your own. It was just fucking scary as shit. It, it, it brought it. You know, it, it, what was missing from Resident Evil? It went to action orientated, crazy. Like Dead Space brought that true survival horror back that tense like the atmospheric uh kind of game and um and god of war 3 which is one of the best looking games on on the ps3 just you know you know stunning looking game but just looking up there i mean like uh, behind us we've got a huge selection of um of ps3 games you know we've got the kill zone games um dishonored hitman i mean there's just red dead red red dead redemption you know like there's too much to talk about. Too much to talk about, but that was my system, you know, for the last generation, you know, like I say, the Xbox 360, for me, got put aside, it gathered dust. For many years, I didn't even have one. Um, the PS3 was my system, you know, that was the one, which, you know, I still game on a lot today. And then, um, then for me, I... Going on to PC, not talking too much about it, but the current gaming rig that we've got here right now, uh, that was the next thing that I bought, which I had custom built because I wanted a good, you know, my my PC behind that was just struggling. Even playing like World of Warcraft, it was, you know, getting on quite a lot. I wanted a new system that played, you know, the I wanted, basically wanted a future-proof system. And I think this was about 2009, 2010. I got I spent a lot of money on this system because I wanted to be able to play things for a good few years, you know, at a yeah. good level. And um and that's what I got and you know I've played I've invested a lot of time in in PC gaming on Steam, you know, playing um you know Counter-Strike Global Offensive or uh Final Fantasy 14 or you know MMOs, any kind of online game shooters um well, we've got here, uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic. Uh, you know, another MMO I put a lot of time into. Uh, Bioshock Infinite, which I only played through PC. But it, Steam, Jesus Christ! Look at anyone's Steam library. Like, you know, I've probably got hundreds and hundreds of games in my Steam library, and a lot of them I've probably only played five minutes of. But just Steam is just, you know, Steam sales are so you get games so cheap. They're too cheap. You can't They're, not you exactly. Can't not so, buy them. and everyone's just got a backlog that would take their whole year, their, their whole life to play if they wanted to complete everything but you know it is what it is but i do love pc gaming as much as i love console gaming yeah um uh yeah so then other systems did you have any other systems after your your, your xbox 360 you did have a period where you bought the ps3 and then you didn't have much luck with that did you you got a yeah no it's just didn't just didn't happen no just didn't didn't happen probably it's got it too late really yeah i got it um, current consoles. I mean, do you want to talk about our current consoles now, or should we leave that until 
we can we can leave we I think we can leave uh the like the current gen we should say until uh until till, started properly. Till, yeah to for maybe the next episode we'll we'll talk about what we've been playing in our in our current systems um the only thing I want to know uh, um the Nintendo 3DS I didn't own a DS you know I, I had no. all the Game Boys didn't have a DS but Nintendo 3DS I have the original Nintendo 3DS not the XL or the new one that's just come out but I got that mainly for Ocarina of Time Zelda Ocarina of Time, which I never owned the original on the on the on the uh, sixty four, and I completed that, and that is one of the best games I've ever played. But um, Nintendo 3DS is a great is a great system, you know, for the few Nintendo exclusive games. Yeah. Um, but it's not one that I play a lot of. But uh, yeah, it's a good system in, on its own. But but yeah, we won't go into the the systems our current systems no, or the that next gen ones. Started. We'll save that to talk about what we've been playing. For the our next episode, which will take a more structured approach, yeah, a, a format that we'll be going with generally throughout the weeks. Um, yeah, so that pra- practically wraps up our gaming history. So that way, you know, well, it doesn't really wrap up. That's the thing. That's the thing about games. It's just so many of them. Oh, it's always going. Yeah, it really scratch the surface. But that's we haven't scratched of... the surface, and there's so much stuff we, we're going to be talking about. Like, you know, we'll we'll have certain um, shows and where we will focus on a certain game, you know, maybe a classic or a personal favourites of one of our game, maybe a YouTube um, Let's Play where we'll play through classics or one of our f- favourite games. So we can dig deeper into, you know, like the games that have affected us most or even current, you know, current ones that we're loving. Yeah. But, um, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, so... Uh, so we've... So uh, in, in sort of closing, we've got a few... Uh, we've been rambling on for two hours. Is that two hours? Two hours now, so... Which is way, way much longer than we intended to do for our first has episode. Been, has it actually been two hours? Is that, well, it's been over two, two hours, two minutes. Fuck. Yeah, so... We've got to edit this down. No one's going to listen to this. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we, that's the thing. We actually have to edit this now. We, Like I said, we're, we're learning everything as we go. So we're just kind of like going with the flow. We're doing this. We're going to... We've never edited anything before, other than our pilot, which was a bit of a yeah. So again, this is all a learning process. We're doing it as we go. So um, yeah, yeah. So, thanks very much for listening. Yeah, but if you have, yeah, let yeah. us know. This is what we need. This is one thing we do need from people who have listened to it. Let us know. Um, we've got a Twitter account. We've got that set up. Uh, which is go and, go and roll out our um our stuff. Uh, we've got at Game Cave Podcast on Twitter. That's all one word. Yep. Um, well, uh, our website, which is at, as we're recording right now, is in kind of progress of being built. But you know, by the time this gets up on uploaded on YouTube, it may be fully working with our podcast on there. But that's gamecaveuk dot com. Um, our YouTube channel, which hopefully, if you're watching this channel, if you're watching this video on there, uh, that's at gamecaveuk. And uh, if you want to email us, if you want to get in touch with us, let us know what you know what you thought of the show. It's gamecaveuk at gmail dot com. Uh, um, anything you, any suggestions, any well, I, I said to you, you any, know, anything. Let us know. Give we, us feedback. We're going to upload this and we're going to put this out into the wild. And I just want to see what happens. Obviously, we're going to put this out on Twitter and that and, and stuff that you know we've done the episode. But I said to you before, if if you know. I'm I'm just enjoying talking about games and this is what we wanted to do. And if anyone manages to listen to this, like, you know, like I just I I just want to hear the first person that listened to this and just genuinely tell us what you thought or what you hated or mm. any input you, you know. Um I don't just, I don't want to hear the first person that genuinely hated us. Oh yeah, whatever. You know, I I'm you know, I just want to hear someone that listened to us. You know, I'll be I'll be yeah, like true. I'll be like, "Whoa, you actually sit and listen to us fucking talking for 2 hours. Well done." We we'll have to send you something. <laughs> but um yeah so if you did if you did listen to this or you did watch this on youtube um you know if you liked it like subscribe share um leave us a review you know good or bad whatever preferably good if you can please um you know if you listen to this through itunes leave a review you know tell friends share five star that shit five star it all the way even if subscribe you like it, even if you didn't like it even if you think we're absolute wankers yeah. follow us on five twitter tweet us on twitter you know, tell us, you know, if there's anything that you, you know, agreed with what we've been said today or if, if you've got any ideas or any thoughts on what you should do, let us know. Anything else you want to add? No, that's pretty much it. It's been a, I don't want to add any more to what's already been a, an elongated show. show yeah. yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, 
Until next time, thanks very much for watching, and uh, we'll catch you in the next episode of the Game Cave Podcast. Thank you. Thank you.